On today's episode, we go back to basics and discuss how to target trout in our locally stocked lakes and streams. New anglers are key to the survival of the sport we all love. Watch as we break down the basics of gear, behavior, and techniques for trout. Right now on Day One Outdoors. situation that ran. We're coming off of a high water event here. The outdoors is not a hobby. It's not our passion. It is our way of life. We make the perfect cast, slow our breathing to execute a perfect shot, spend hours researching locations and techniques. Regardless of effort, we fail. This series is not about incredible bites or trophy animals. Our goal here at Day One Outdoors is to educate our viewers, utilizing new technology to offer a different perspective. Watch as we research new areas, plan out the day, and adjust to changing conditions. If not for other experienced outdoorsmen teaching me along the way, I wouldn't have this life. I owe it to them to pass this knowledge along. I owe it to you. Join us here on Day One Outdoors, and let's learn how to become more successful in the field and on the water from day one. When I was younger, I quickly became enamored with fishing and the outdoors. Yet, no one in my family fished or hunted. Magazines, guided trips, and local tackle shops are where I found most of my information. Getting involved in the outdoors can be intimidating at first. Because of this, I was excited to create an episode of Day One Outdoors where we simplify the concepts of fishing and encourage new anglers to hit their local waterways. Walking into a large sporting goods store can be a bit daunting, so let's take a moment, show you how to walk through the aisles and select the right gear to be successful out there for trout. What we're gonna do right now is talk about how to select the right rod, reel, and line to be successful out here on our local waters for trout. Let's first start by selecting the right rod to take out their trout fishing with us. What we're gonna look for is a rod that's in length of five and a half feet to seven feet. We can find that information right here at the foregrip above the handle on the rods. Now what you're gonna also look for is a line class rating of two to eight pound, which again is found right here, and that will give you the perfect action for chasing these trout. When selecting a reel at your local sporting goods stores, there are a lot of options, whether it's in a package on the shelf or at a reel counter. And all we need to focus in on is line capacity. Don't worry about any other number. And what we want to look for is six to eight pound line in 100 to 200 yards. You can find that information right here. Once you've selected your reel, now it's time to pick out our line to add onto the spool. What we want to look for again is six to eight pound line and enough line to fill up the spool that we purchased. So you can find that information on any packaging from any line company. But you can see right here, I have six pound line in 250 yards. That's more than enough line to fill up our spool. Sometimes trying to find the right rod and reel is very time consuming. And when you come to these end caps or on some of the rod racks, you can find what are called pre-made combos. And those are setups that already have the rod and reel attached, just like these right here. And some of these pre-made combos even have line already spooled. So it takes a whole step out of the equation. Now that we've selected our rod, reel, and line, it's time to pick out the fun stuff, our gear that's actually gonna catch these fish. And at most outdoor retailer locations, they'll have what's called an end cap with all the gear that you need, and you can especially find that during trout season. Let's start with our terminal tackle. First, let's select our swivels. Swivels, what we need is a size eight to 10. Right here, we got a size 10. Snap swivels, again, size eight to 10. And our hooks, 
we are going to look for a size 8, it's called bait holder hook. That will help us keep our bait on the hook while we're out there fishing. Next we need to select our leader line. In our leader line, we're going anywhere from a 4 to 6 pound. And the reason why we're going with a lighter line is because if we do get snagged, it will easily break off. Our main line is 6 to 8 pound, leader line anywhere from 4 to 6 pound. It's always good to have a set of pliers that will help us trim up our tag ends and pinch on our split shots. We're going to get our weights. There are always these nice little variety packs that have different sizes of small split shot. And then also a variety pack of egg sinkers, our sliding sinkers that we'll use for bait fishing. Next, we'll grab our stringer, which is important to keep our fish on. Let's go ahead and grab a few different options for bait. We're gonna grab real quick a package of these dough bait nuggets. Your typical dough bait in a different color to give us variety and some salmon eggs. Now that we've grabbed our baits, we're gonna grab a couple lures to take out there as well. And lures can be great for helping us find fish. We're gonna grab a couple spinners here real quick, some small spinners, usually around the size of about eighth of an ounce or a couple inches in length will be sufficient. You can also grab some weighted spoons or some unweighted lures like these smaller plugs. Another useful tool when bait fishing are bobbers. Let's grab a couple of those as well. Another great option for bait for trout are worms. We'll grab a dozen of them right here. To become familiar with our waterways, make sure you pick up a regulations booklet. It will have all the information you need to be successful and legal out on the water. Now that we have our booklet, let's figure out how to go pick up our license. So we're gonna open up our pamphlet to the first page in the table of contents. And right here, it shows us where we can find all the information on how to get our license here locally at a sporting goods store or even online. Next, we need to figure out the regulations for our body of water where we're gonna be fishing. On the right-hand side, it shows where each region is across the state. Now, to see a map, we we'll just turn a couple pages, and here's each angling zone around the state so we can figure out exactly where we wanna fish. Now that we've picked up all of our gear, we're ready to go hit the water and all for under a hundred bucks for everything that we're gonna need for the entire year. The internet has an unbelievable amount of information as well. By searching your state's name and trout stocking schedule, you will be able to find a lake or stream near you that will be stocked, when the fish will arrive, and how many will be put into your local waterway. Your state's Department of Fish and Wildlife will also typically have additional information to help guide you along the way to success in the field chasing trout. Fishfield is your one-stop shop online for the gear you need here in the Pacific Northwest and beyond. From salmon and steelhead, saltwater, trout and kokanee, even crabbing. Visit fishfield.com today to place an order with no sales tax and have the gear you need shipped fast. Fishfield.com, we have what the Northwest Outdoorsman needs. Every once in a while, a new lure comes along that catches every angler's attention. It could be because of all the irresistible colors and finishes, or the patented skip beat action, or maybe it's the wide variety of sizes designed for salmon, trout, walleye, steelhead, and mackinac, and more. But just for the record, we know one thing for certain, we didn't design the maglip to catch fishermen. Yakima Bait Company. We have arrived here at the lake, but where do we go now? By looking at the shoreline along the body of water, we can understand what structure is most likely to be under the surface. If we see a gentle sloping shoreline with grass and reeds, we should expect the water near shore to be a flat with little structure and possibly weeded. If the bank is steep with large boulders and rock, the bottom will be similar with a drastic change in depth quickly off the shoreline and large structure beneath the surface. To help select the spot to begin fishing, Let's take a moment and talk about trout behavior basics. During low light in the mornings and evenings, trout will generally be more active. This is when you will find fish near the shorelines on shallow flats and just under the surface searching for food. 
As the sun gets higher and the water warms, the trout may become lethargic and search out deeper, cooler water to rest. Don't be afraid to ask other anglers how their day is going. If other anglers are catching trout on shallow flats with bait on the bottom, then that information will help you narrow down the water to fish significantly. Now that we have selected our location, let's break down the two main rigs you'll be fishing for trout, lures and bait. Fishing with lures can be a very effective technique for targeting trout or even help in locating them. What we're gonna do right now is talk about the two different types of lures that you can use out here on your local body of water. You have your weighted lures and your unweighted. When you're using your weighted lures, all you need to do is use the fisherman's knot to attach your snap swivel then clip your snap swivel onto your weighted lure. So let's go ahead and do that now. I'm going to again take our main line and use the fisherman's knot to attach our snap swivel. So again, make the loop, wrap seven times, take your tag in through the loop, pull it tight. When selecting a weighted lure, there are a lot of different options that we picked up from our local sporting goods store. There are our larger ones, which carry a little bit more weight that are gonna sink faster, but also allow you to retrieve a little bit quicker as well to cover more water. There's also your lighter ones, a little bit smaller presentation to maybe find the more finicky fish. But again, what we're trying to do here is match the hatch. Use something that the fish actually will want to bite that they're used to seeing out there in the water. Then you also have your spoons, your weighted spoons, that you can add in as well. We're going to go ahead and attach our heavier weighted spinner here right now. Simply open up your snap, put the pointed end through the eyelet, like so. Now we're going to close it up, so you just pinch it closed. It's like that. Simple as that, we're ready to cast. What we're trying to do is reel just fast enough to allow this blade to spin around on the axis of the body. So again, make your cast as far out as you can. As soon as it hits the water, click over your bail and start your retrieve. If you keep your rod tip higher, it's going to be shallower in the water column. Rod tip low, it'll be a little bit lower in the water column. Nice steady retrieve. Now that we've learned how to use a weighted lure, we're gonna talk about how to use an unweighted lure. A lot of cases, these unweighted lures are a lot smaller. So because this lure is so small and light, it will actually float. In this case, what we need to do is first put the line through the eyelet, just like we've done before. Again, tie our fisherman's knot. Pull it tight and clip off the tag end, just like so. Now we're ready to add our split shot to add a little bit of weight. If I try and cast this right now, the way it is, I'm not gonna be able to get any distance whatsoever because this lure is so light. So to get this lure down in the water column where the fish are, and to allow us to cast a little ways further, we're going to add a split shot to it. I'm going to grab a split shot here out of our container that we picked up at the store. And we have our open end right here in the middle of the split shot. We're gonna attach that about 18 inches above our unweighted lure. So I'm going to slide the line into the middle of the split shot, just like so, and then use our pliers to pinch it closed. That way it'll stay in that exact same spot on your line while you're casting. Pinch it nice and tight. There we are. It's pinched off about 18 inches above our unweighted lure. Now what I can do, be able to cast this lure further out away from shore to where the fish are and cover a little more water with a different style of lure with a different action. With these unweighted lures, you want a little bit slower retrieve. They don't have any weight to them except for the split shot that you added. So on your retrieve, you're gonna be a lot slower and you can feel the vibration of this lure working here right now. Now that we know how to rig up our lures, let's talk about how to set up our bait rigs. What we're gonna do right now is break down how to put together your floating bait rig. And first, what we need to start with is our main line. So we take our main line off of our rod tip and we're going to put what's called a sliding sinker onto our main line first. So we take our tag in, place it through the hole. So that way it's sliding on our main line here. Next, we're gonna take our swivel, put our tag in through the eyelet, and then once again, tie our fisherman's knot. Next, we're either gonna take a section off of our main line that we've done earlier, or using a leader spool, pull off anywhere from 12 to 24 inches of line. You're gonna use a longer leader in deeper water 
or when you're around weed lines and big rocks, a shorter section of leader when you're close to shore and it's just fine gravel or sediment or sand on the bottom. Just because we're fishing along a weed line here, it cut about an 18 inch section. There we are, nice short section of leader here. Once we've cut our section of leader, we're gonna grab the other end of our swivel that has nothing tied to it, place our leader line through that eyelet, and again, tie our fisherman's knot. Pull it tight, there we go. Now our leader's set. So we're gonna get to the end of our leader here, grab our size eight bait hook, and attach it using the fisherman's knot. Make our loop, wrap five to seven times, now it's time to apply the bait. There we go. Now with your sliding weight here, when you make your cast, you're gonna reel your line up tight. It's going to come tight to your swivel and your bait will float up off the bottom. When that fish bites, it won't feel any pressure whatsoever because the weight will be on the bottom and the fish will be able to pull your main line freely. You'll see that bite in your rod tip. There are two types of floating bait out there in the market that are used most commonly. There are your nugget style and what are called your dough baits. They both serve the same purpose. They both float. There are two ways to apply them. The nugget baits are typically easiest to put on your hook. Just pull one out, hold it gently in your hand, take the point of your hook, slide it right through the middle. Then on up towards the eye of the hook. Just like that. Very simple. With dough baits, it allows you to choose how big of a bait you actually want to use. Now you wanna make sure to use just enough to make sure that your hook floats. So I'm gonna take my finger, scoop out about the size of a dime here, and then I'm going to take my size eight bait hook, lay it on top of the bait, and just roll it around the hook. Essentially, we're just gonna make a dough ball out of the bait. Just like that. Here we go. So we have a fish on right now. We just caught it on a spinner. You want to make sure you keep a tight line. If your line goes slack, they have a chance to shake the hook out of their mouth. So always keep the line tight. He's pulling pretty good. They're going to shake their head a lot. Once you get them up near the shoreline, you're going to keep about six, eight feet of line out and just walk backwards. Slide the fish up on the bank. And now you got them. We've gone through the hard work of catching a fish. Now we need to make sure that it's the perfect table fare. And to do that, we need to take all the blood out of the fish. Now that the fish is bleeding and we're getting all the blood out of the meat, it's gonna taste a lot better. Now we're gonna place our fish into the ice chest. Salmon swim up to 3,000 miles to return to their exact place of birth to reproduce. Well, most of the time. Michael, we're just showing up here at the park and we're about ready to get the kayaks off of the trailer, but let's first go through some safety. I see you got your life jacket on already. Walk us through what's important to have out there on the water to be safe. Well, Cody, first and foremost, uh, as you can see, I'm wearing a PFD. Um, biggest thing, you know, especially here with our cold waters in the Northwest, you gotta have a, a personal flotation device. This is your lifeline to at least buying time if you're in a situation you need to, you know, 
get you know wave for wave for help make sure you have a pfd and, and start working your way towards shore sure. second of all would be you know having an extra paddle having you know at least check your equipment make sure you the stuff that you're bringing to the water whether it be a kayak or a canoe that everything's in great working shape sure and a third would be a you know a flag you know let others know that you're there you know by visibly showing a flag and mm -hmm. worst case scenario you have that flag to wave through the air if you're in a distressed situation and you need you know you need rescue Absolutely. Well, I know that we got the right equipment right now, but for those that are at all concerned about having a properly fitting life jacket at most of our parks and boat ramps, you can find this loaner program to borrow a life jacket for the day to make sure everyone's safe. We got the right equipment. We're prepared. Let's go ahead and get the kayaks off the trailer and start fishing. Michael, we just pulled away from the dock here and we're going to be exploring a lot of this lake here today. So I think a good way for us to first do that to try and find these fish is to troll. We we'll use the exact same rod and reels that we had set up for our earlier techniques. What we got attached on yours is a little bit heavier weight. We use the same egg sinkers from our bait rig using the dough baits, the same swivel, and then just about eight inches to a foot down to a dodger. And the purpose of the dodger is just to get the fish's attention. And then another short leader, again about 12, 18 inches, out to a spinner. And we're going to tip the spinner with a little bit of worm just to give it some added flavor, some added scent, and get these fish's attention here. We're early in the season, and these fish, for the most part, because the water temperature hasn't warmed up, no thermocline has formed yet, so these fish should be up higher in the water column. We know that this lake has been stocked recently, so we're going to troll along the edges of the shoreline, see if we can't find a fish or two, get back in some of these bays, and we'll try a few new techniques. Let's do it. All right, man. So when we're putting this gear out, what we want to do is manage our depth. So the way to do that is by counting what's called pulls. You're gonna start at the reel and go to your first eyelet. Now every rod's different, so don't feel like you need to have it consistent between two different boats. Just make it consistent in your own. If you get bit at 12 pulls, keep putting it out 12 pulls. The more line that we put out, the deeper our gear's gonna go. So Michael, since you got a little bit more weight on there, why don't you start at about 30 pulls. I'm gonna start a bit shallower and faster and uh, try and cover a bit more water. And I'm gonna put mine out right about 12 to 18 pulls. Sounds good. All right, let's get started. Michael, we tried trolling for a little while, and there's a good looking point right this way. Let's switch up our techniques and try something new. Cody, what do you think, a bobber here? Yeah, I think a bobber worked pretty well, but you know, you just fished with a spinner tip with worm. Why don't we switch it up a little bit, pop that bobber off. I see you still have your egg sinker on there. Let's put on a dough bait, see if that works in the shallower water. Sounds good. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and take this bobber off then. Go ahead and uh, get this so we can fish it off the bottom. Go ahead and using the sherbet trout nuggets here. See what see what we can do. We'll see if that'll bite. Well, Michael's fishing inshore a little bit tighter in shallower water. I came out here towards the middle of the lake, and what I'm going to do is just drift with the wind. We have a nice light breeze here today, two to four miles an hour. This is a great way to kick back and relax. And what I'm gonna do is just take out a couple pulls, anywhere from five to 20 pulls, depending upon how deep the water is. Now I'm just gonna let out a little bit of line. Remember my number. Go out to 10 here. And just hold on, very simple. And for a while, we decided it was time to get back to trolling and cover water. Oh, there's one right there. I <laughs> got him. There he is. Awesome. On that spinner. Perfect. Great eating size one, too. Very nice. Got one. Oh, nice, and it's a tagged fish. Fishing for trout on your local lakes and streams is not only a fun pastime and a great way to spend a day with friends and family, but it also puts food on your table.
It was a single six inch trout stocked in a canal caught on a hand line at the age of six that began my passion for the outdoors. <laughs> How does that happen? That fish, man, is that one fat. You eat well. Trolling seems to be the ticket here today. And I think the reason why is because we're able to cover a lot of water and find these active fish that have just been planted. Because someone took the time to introduce me to fishing, I have a lifetime of memories and am surrounded by incredible people with a passion for the outdoors. Take a kid fishing, your neighbor or a friend. You never know who you might inspire. <laughs>